Greetings, and welcome to another terrifying edition of WYTR's Radio Theater. Today, we at WYTR check out an assortment of spine-tingling tales from our creepy collection of urban legends and campfire stories. So brace yourselves, friends, and try not to scream. Shh! As we enter the Library of Horror. Welcome to the library. Is there anything I can help you find today? No, nah, I don't like books, unless they got pictures. Well, if you don't like books, you may be in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a big believer that there is a book out there for everyone. We just have to find the right one for you. I love books. I've read so many that I've begun to lose count. Last summer, I did the reading program, and my whole sheet filled it about a week and a half. It was awesome. I was the first one to finish it, but I had to go to the Pete's Priority Party by myself. But that's okay, because I brought my mom along. She's my best friend anyway, so... Has anyone ever told you that you talk too much? I think that's <coughs> great. I like reading, too. Yeah, I read sometimes, like on the way to my games. I'm on a travel team, but I read them on my phone. Books are a thing of the past. Well, it's still considered a book, even if it's read on a Kindle or a tablet. What are you all looking for today? Can I help anyone find anything? I have some recommendations. Our teen fiction section has some great stuff. John Green, Stephanie Myers, this new author, we just got Listen, it. Listen, lady, I didn't need a sales pitch. I think we're looking for some scary stories, since Halloween's just around the corner. Ah, horror. Well, we have a whole horror and thriller section. Yeah, but we don't want anything too long. Or too short. Or too scary. And preferably with pictures. What? I like pictures. <laughs> Well, that is an awful lot of very specific criteria, but lucky for you guys, the library has just about anything you could ever imagine. So maybe we can find a book for each of you. Do you know any scary stories? Ooh, ooh, every year when I visit my grandma and her boyfriend Perry in Arizona, we have a campfire and we tell all kinds of scary stories. I'm talking like pee your little pants kind of scary. Blood and Guts and spiders and snakes kind of scary. No, thank you. I will have to pass on that. You don't do scary. Oh, I do scary. It's not too scary. Wow. I'm always down for a campfire story. When it's dark and the leaves are rustling and the fire's crackling. Or when it's raining outside and you go down into the basement with a flashlight and make a fort with your friends. Uh, or when you sit in a fully lit room and tell mildly spooky but eh, mostly funny stories with your mom and then very happy stories afterwards so that you're not too scared. Where's the fun in that? Well, I have a story or two up my sleeve. Ew, like what? Have you ever heard the story of the hook man? The hook man? The hook man. I don't think I've ever heard of the hook man. Well, I could try telling you the story of the hook man, but I'd need your help. The hook man. Hmm. I don't think I've heard this one. Boring. I want to hear it. Yeah, give it your best shot. One dark and drizzly evening, a teenage girl and her boyfriend were driving to see a movie. I can't wait to see this movie. It's supposed to be so scary. Don't worry, babe. If you get too scared, I'll be right beside you. Will you hold my hand while I cover my eyes? Of course. I may just have to put the armor stuff in. <sighs> As they were driving, the radio station suddenly stopped playing music and interrupted with some breaking news. Cause girls just wanna have fun. Uh, me, 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 me. We regret to interrupt this incredible music with some breaking news. Local authorities want to caution everyone to be on the lookout for a madman wreaking terror on our community. They are calling him the Hook Man. He escaped prison earlier today. Originally arrested for mass murder, the Hook Man, known for the hook that replaced his hand, is on the loose and terrifying children and teens yet again. If you see him, watch out. He will definitely kill you. Now, Back to our previously scheduled pop music. Cause girls just wanna have fun. Turn off that incredible sounding pop music. I'm scared. 
uh, there's nothing to be scared of. The hook dude isn't gonna get us. As they continued their drive down the winding road, they suddenly heard a thump. A thump! Ah! What was that? I, I don't know. Maybe we didn't hear anything? Well, it sounded like it was something. I, I didn't see anything? Well, it was something. Stop and pull over. Maybe we should just keep driving. But we have to make sure we didn't hit anything. Hmm. Yep, see, we didn't hit anything. You didn't even get out of the car to check. Yeah, I can tell we didn't hit anything. Let's just keep driving. Okay, listen, if you are too scared to get out of the car and check, I'll do it. No, no, no. I'm not scared. I just think someone should stay in the car. Make sure everything is safe in here. So I'll stay right here while you go check it out. Ugh, fine. I'll check outside. As the girl looked around in the darkness, she couldn't see the sign of anything. All she could hear was the faint sound of the wind whistling and the crickets chirping. Hey! Ah. Is everything okay out there? Yeah, I don't see anything. Let's get out of here. Probably just a pothole or something. Yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah. We are so stupid. We let that news about the hook man get us all scared. They continued their drive to the theater and watched the movie. It was very scary. And the boy even got to use his signature move. <clears throat> it wasn't until after the movie, as they were walking back to their car, that they saw the most strange sight. I really liked that movie. That ghost was spooky. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't too scared, because you were right there beside me. <laughs> yeah, wasn't even that scary. Then why did you cry? Uh... Uh, I, I, I got popcorn salt in my eye. Yeah, popcorn salt. In my eye. They got closer and closer, and that's when the boy noticed. Whoa, what happened to my car? Did someone hit it? It's all scratched up. There was a long scratch leading from the back bumper of the car. It twisted and turned, leading all the way up to the front driver's side. And there... Lodged into the handle of the car was... The Hook! The authorities never found the Hook Man, but they say on fall nights, you can still see the silhouette of a man with a hook for a hand, stalking through the woods, looking for children and teenagers. In other words, his next victim. Okay. Now that... Scary. But I have so many questions. Like, did they actually hit something? They hit the hook man, duh. Well, I guess we will never know. What do you think the sound was? Definitely the hook man. Oh, I've got one my grandma's boyfriend Perry told me. Once there was a little boy, his parents went away for a long weekend. The babysitter he had staying with him had lots of activities planned for them for the weekend. The first night, they went to the circus and saw the clowns, ha 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 ha, elephants, <laughs> and acrobats. Whoa, whoa. That night, she tucked him into bed. Good night, Billy. We had a great day today. Did you, like, enjoy the circus? I sure did. I loved seeing the monkeys, but I did not like the clowns very much. Why? Weren't they funny when they piled out of their silly little car? They just scare me. Billy, there is nothing to be afraid of. Now get to bed. The babysitter tucked him in, turned off the lights, and left the room. Not long after, as Billy was just drifting off to sleep, he heard a noise, a thump. Thump! Oh. Billy leapt out of bed startled. He looked around the room, and suddenly, outside of his window, 
he saw the face of a clown floating in the tree across the yard. He screamed for the babysitter. Help! Help! Billy! Uh, Billy, what is wrong? Do you see that face in the tree across the yard? It's the face of one of the clowns from the circus. He must have followed us home. It's uh, gone. But it was just there. Uh, Billy, I don't see anything. It is just your imagination. Now get back to bed. So the babysitter tucked him in and left the room. As Billy was just calming himself down, he peered out the window, and there it was again, the face of the clown floating on the treetop. Help, help, he's back! Billy, calm down. See, I don't see anything. Now get back to bed. Please don't leave. Stay here. Stay here in this room with me. Fine. I'll camp out on the floor if it makes you feel better. So the babysitter made a pallet on the floor, and pretty soon they were both drifting off to sleep when they heard a faint noise of breathing. They both snuck over to the window, and there it was again, the face of the clown floating in the tree across the yard. It was only then that the babysitter realized what was happening. Billy, that is not a clown's face in the treetop. It's not? What is it then? It's the reflection from behind us. Boo! Ah! Ah! <laughs> okay, now that was scary. Perry is the best. I've got a scary story. It's called the cursed doll. There once was a girl who loved to play with dolls. She lived in a huge apartment building in the city. One day, she was walking along and found a dusty old doll shop with tons of dolls for sale. She saw them in the window and entered. Hello, the girl said to the shop owner who stood behind the grimy counter. Well, look what we have here. A lovely little girl and all alone. What brings you to my shop? Well, I saw the dolls in the window. I love dolls. I have so many. I collect them. Oh my! You have come to the right place. I have owned this store for 80 years. And I have seen many young girls, just like yourself, come into my store, looking for the perfect doll. Please enjoy walking through the aisles and find yourself a new little friend. The girl took off through the aisles of the store, glancing at shelf upon shelf. There were dolls of all kinds. Old French dolls, baby dolls, automated dolls that wound up and performed movement. Their painted faces stared back at her. Oh, there are so many. I don't know how I would ever pick just one. I always say, you don't pick the doll. The doll picks you! The girl looked through the entire shop. She reached the end of a very long aisle that was sectioned off in the back of the shop. It was covered by a curtain. She pulled back the curtain. Well, what are you doing back here all by yourself? Behind the curtain sat a doll all alone on a high shelf. She knew this was the doll she wanted to buy. She never wanted that doll to have to be alone ever again. She picked it up and carried it to the front counter. Have you made your selection? I have. This is the one I want. The girl handed the doll to the shop owner, who grimaced. This one? You want this one? Out of all the beautiful dolls in my shop, that's the one you picked. Yeah. No, absolutely not. I will not let you have this one. But she's the one I want! I cannot let you take her. Well, I'm not going to take her. I want to buy her. Money isn't a problem. I will absolutely not sell her to you. But I'll pay any price. If you want her that bad, you can take her. But I won't sell her to you. I can't sell her to you. I would never do that to a child. Are you sure? I can have her. For free. If you want her, yes. But it's not my fault. I've warned you. The little girl was so excited. And as she left the shop, she couldn't wait. So... She took the doll out of the bag and carried her home, her head facing out so she could see the world around her and not have to be alone anymore. 
the little girl got to her apartment and pressed the button for the elevator. She stepped into the elevator and, just as the doors were about to close, the doll's head turned around to face the girl and screamed, Stupid, stupid girl! No! The elevator doors closed. And the little girl was never seen again. That was terrifying! Does anyone else have any spooky stories? Oh, uh, I might be able to come up with something. Okay. Anybody else? My dad always tells stories about the swamp monster, but that's just his ex-wife. How about Bloody Mary? Oh, that's the one about the mirror, right? Shh. Don't give it away. I'll tell it. Go right ahead. There was a little old lady who lived deep in the woods. Her home was a tiny shack, and she sold her potions and remedies from a small stand in front of her house. Her name was Bloody Mary. Potions! Get your potions! Fresh made potions daily right here! Get your potions! No, 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 no. She was an old witch. It's gotta be scary. Oh, sorry. Potions and remedies. Eye of a newt, wart of a toad. Come have a little taste of what Mary has brewed for you. Much better, thank you. Anytime. Everyone who lived in town avoided the old crone at all costs. Don't go near her. I hear she kills frogs and rabbits just for fun. She will poison your livestock and her crops will go dry if even you look her in the eye. She's just playing creepy. That's all I gotta say. Nice. Anyways, everyone in town stayed clear of her shack in the woods for fear that they would be cursed by the old enchantress. Soon the little girls in the village began to disappear, one by one. My daughter Lindsay, she's gone! Has anyone seen her? My daughter Brittany has disappeared. What will I do without my daughter? <laughs> my daughter Helga is missing. Helga? All the names in the world, and you chose Helga. Fine. Ethel. Her name's Ethel. You happy? Whatever. None of the villagers had any idea where their daughters could be. They searched everywhere, through the fields and the neighboring towns, all the stores and shops, the local pubs, but their children were nowhere to be seen. They could not find the missing girls. A few of the villagers even worked up the courage to go ask Bloody Mary if she had any idea where their daughters could be. Mary, have you seen our girls? Do you have any idea where they could be? I know not where your daughters be. Oh, what a shame that they are gone and will never be found. How will we ever be able to rest without knowing where they are? You certainly didn't see any of them pass by here? Not Brittany, <laughs> not Lindsay. Uh, don't forget Ethel. Fine, Ethel. Not Brittany, or Lindsay, or Ethel. My beautiful daughter, Ethel. Don't push it. I'm really worried about Ethel. Uh, villagers, I know not where your daughters be. Well, leave me to sell my potions and poultices. But as the villagers watched her, they began to notice her appearance had changed. Her skin was no longer ragged, wrinkly, and aged. Her hair was less white and ratty. It had begun to turn black. She no longer stood hunched over, and the hump on her back had vanished. You look different, Mary. Your skin looks more youthful. Your hair looks to be changed. Its color has been restored. Hey, Mary. Can I get your number? Are you serious? Villagers, <laughs> my appearance is due to my potions. They would do you all some good. The villagers became suspicious that she had something to do with all the young girl's disappearance. They all went home, but one night, a sister of one of the missing girls... Ethel has a sister? I mean, Ethel has a sister. What's her name? Helga. <sighs> Fine, but one night, Helga, a sister of one of the missing girls... Uh, Ethel. Can I please just tell the story? Okay, okay. One night, Helga, a sister of Ethel rose from her bed and began to walk in a trance across the house and out the door. It just so happened that her parent woke up and witnessed their daughter in her trance. As she crossed the house and walked through the field, she headed straight towards the woods. 
Her parents screamed in fright as they witnessed this and woke up the other villagers in the town. <laughs> they all grabbed their pitchforks, torches, and ropes. Yeah. And followed her into the woods. There, there she is! There, standing by a large oak tree, was Bloody Mary, holding her broom in the air and casting her spell so that she may devour the girl's youthful spirit. There she is! Stop her! Her concentration was broken and the spell was released. The villagers gathered around her. Tie her to the tree! Yeah, what he said. The villagers tied her to the tree and lit it aflame with their torches. As she burned, Bloody Mary called out a curse onto them. When devils, wizards, and jugglers enter the night, that is my favorite small delight. I'll ne'er be gone, that is my plight. I'll show you soon with your own sight. They watched as her body disappeared and soon found the graves of their children near her tiny shack. From that day until even now, she reveals herself to anyone who is foolish enough to speak her name three times out loud in front of a mirror in a dark room. She appears and feasts on the souls to become youthful again. All they have to say is Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. <laughs> was so terrifying oh what a great story it has just made my day getting to hear all these spooky stories from you kids okay even i do man this is pretty fun yeah i hadn't heard any of these before i hope i can sleep tonight well why don't you find a book that isn't scary and you can check it out and read it tonight that's a great idea yeah maybe that's a good idea for all of us make your selections and i'll meet you at the front desk okay all right maybe mm -hmm. Uh, oh my gosh, what's wrong? Are you okay? Uh, we do have to try and keep it down. This is a library after all. The, the, the book! <laughs> <laughs> it's more like the hook! Thank you for visiting the Library of Horror, and do come again, if you dare. Thanks also to our friends at the University of St. Francis Department of Music Technology, WBOI 89.1 FM, playwright and director Gavin Drew, the WYTR players, Violet Park, Kyla Hockemeyer, Ethan Bushnell, Rowan Magna, and Abby Simpson. <laughs> to learn more about the Fort Wayne Youth Theatre, visit fortwayneyouththeatre.org. On behalf of everyone at WYTR Radio Theatre here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Thank you, and goodbye. <laughs>